Good evening and welcome to the Spotlight. My name is Levi Connex. Tonight we are discussing about journey management. We feel that in this season in time, as we are looking forward towards the holidays, uh, Christmas and the New Year, and of course the uh, Jab Holiday coming up just this week, a lot of us will be on the roads. And we've been having some trouble. Given the rains, given the fact that uh, many people are traveling, and uh, we feel that at this point we want to give you some tips and some know-how on what to do when you are undertaking these journeys to different parts of our country and even beyond our borders. With us tonight is a gentleman who is well versed in this. Uh, he's a roads uh, safety specialist. His name is Owar Otet. Karibu sana. Thank you. Glad to have you here. Maybe we start from uh, just journey management. What is journey management? Journey management, uh, before I say that, first let me say thank you for having me on Cast TV. Thank you, Cast TV, for supporting road safety. And uh, we thank God for the good health that he has given us. So I want to start by saying journey management plan are just two sides of approaching a travel to help minimize the possible hazards that are there. Uh -huh. Number one, we know our roads are crowded. The users are not well trained, and if they are well trained, most of them have ignored a lot of traffic rules that have been put in place. Uh -huh. But journey management comes in where we now want to start achieving the whole process of making your journey safe and comfortable, then that is where we now come in with journey management plan. There are just a set of procedures that are put in place to help you manage and plan your journey well. Like uh, a good example would be when you are traveling with your family, it is different from when you are traveling alone. Mm -hmm. A person who is traveling with kids needs to carry certain things. They need to plan their journey in a way that they can be resting after some few hours. They do the rest because of the comfortability of the kids. The children reaches a time that they now become a bother. They want to have you concentrate on them. So we are bringing in something in road safety that is called journey management plan to help people plan their travels effectively, smoothly, and safely. Right. So um, plan your travel effectively, smoothly, and uh, safely, you say. Uh, one would think that uh, these are things that, uh, you know, mm -hmm. are supposed to be normal. I mean, people get on journeys every day, and they travel. Mm -hmm. Most people uh, may think they know, but uh, they don't know. Mm. You are in a vehicle, you've moved a uh, few kilometers, you decide to eat nyamachoma. You come back, uh, whatever you ate gives you a stomach upset. You now start having running stomach. After every few kilometers, you want to stop, run into the bush, run into the washrooms, anywhere. Did you even plan to carry your tissue papers? Did you even plan to carry water? Did you even plan to carry any medicine, flagyl, anything that can help you? What is in your first aid box? Uh, Some time back, I ran a WhatsApp group, and there was a heated debate. Should we have fire extinguishers? Should we even have medical tablets inside that first aid kit. Mm -hmm. You know, these things, you will never see the need until when need arises. Mm. When someone is hurt, you don't even have a bandage. Most people are not even trained uh, as first aid responders. A first aid responder, when uh, they meet such situations, they will even tear off their clothes to tie you and stop that bleeding. Mm -hmm. But if you plan your journey well, you will always anticipate anything that might happen along this journey and to the end of it. So you know that uh, after some two, three hours, I'm traveling with kids who are two years and five years, their needs are different. 
and their concentration in this journey is going to be different. You will even need to make more stopovers when you're with a kid because there comes a time when now they want to join you on the wheel. You want to try and pin them back on the back seat, they want to join you on the wheel. It becomes a, a big distraction and then you lose it. Mm -hmm. Kidogo, kidogo, boom, an accident. You hear someone has killed a family. There's an MP in this country who one time had an accident some years back. He was the only survivor. All the nine occupants of that vehicle died because mm. the kids were now trying to look for the attention of their father. Every time, you know, when you are driving as a father, there's a way you bond with your kids. And this time, you, they, they see you here. You're not even bonding with them. You are trying to concentrate on driving. They will not get it. But when you plan journey management, you get stops. You get to play around with them. You get to run with them. And you make your stops at safe places. Mm. Yes. OK. So there's something you wrote that went uh, viral online. Uh, it's, um, uh, uh, it's basically a, a guideline. More, to, more of a checklist. Yes, uh -huh. you know, a checklist on people who are driving uh, uh, personal vehicles. So we'll talk about that. Uh -huh. And then I'll ask you about a checklist if you are using a PSV uh, or a, a PSV. bus. You're uh -huh. in a bus, you're in a train. Uh -huh. uh, you know, you know well, uh, uh, for the train might not really apply because of the road aspect. Uh -huh. But if you're in a bus in this, in the, in this aspect, uh, uh -huh. uh, let's start with that private vehicle uh -huh. checklist. Uh -huh. What do you... Uh, require. Let's go through your list because that's uh, in many of our WhatsApp groups. Just two, three days ago, the best experience was felt between Gilgil and Naivasha when people were in traffic for more than uh, one and a half days. My checklist number one always have five liters of water in that car. Make sure you have plenty. You can have 10 liters if you want, if you have space. But make sure the minimum you can carry is five. Oh. The least you can carry is five liters. If you can, make sure you have two or three blankets, depending on the room you have in that vehicle. Carry dried food. In my group, every time there is traffic, it has a lot of truck drivers, and many, most of them are drivers. Mm -hmm. So every time there is traffic, you hear somebody say, Nunua KDF. Oh. There is this hard mandazi. It's good. It's, oh. It cements the stomach. Like a rock. Yeah, it's a rock for the stomach. So I always urge, carry something you can eat, especially when you have children around you, because this traffic jam will find you in a place where there is no food. The stretch between Gilgil to Naivasha, there's no food. The only things you see outside are baboons who are looking for food. Mm. And at times they might even get wild and attack. So make sure you also have uh, number four, toilet paper in your car. You can have a uh, serviette or whatever, but make sure you have a roll or two of toilet papers. First aid kit fully serviced. When I say fully serviced, it means it must have everything inside it, be it a bandage. What's everything? A bandage, uh -huh. a pair of scissors, razor blades. If you can have the scalpel knife, have it. You must have several pairs of gloves. I want to talk about gloves because uh, you might have the heart to want to help a victim and their blood is contaminated with HIV or any other disease. Mm -hmm. Any slight cut, you get an infection. Mm -hmm. That is why we always urge, always make sure you have surgical or any medical gloves for your own safety. Mm -hmm. Make sure you have painkillers inside that first aid kit. Have all the necessary bandages that are needed. Ensure your vehicle has fire extinguisher. You know, there is a difference between having it and knowing how to use it. Make it a personal effort to know how to use it. Make sure, this is interesting, you have uh, jumper cables. Uh -huh. In traffic, the battery runs. The engine does not run. So the energy used is the battery. You might be running your radio, 
doing your AC, when traffic clears, you try to ignite, it is dead. You don't have jumper cables. Make sure you have jumper cables. Make sure you have a reflective material, a reflective jacket. Make sure you have life-saving triangles. The, 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 the triangle ones, we call them life-saver. Yeah. And uh, many people fear, they don't even know the correct distance to place. It is 70. The reason why it is 70, the maximum speed on our roads are 80. If you are at 80 kilometers per hour, you need 70 meters to stop safely. There's some roads that are 100. Like for people in Nairobi, Nakuru. So when you so are doing 100, yes. these, these, uh, these uh, reflective triangles are kept 70 meters. But I believe visibility and the reflection okay. they have will warn you way before that 70 distance. So anytime mm -hmm. you see that triangle, you always de-accelerate. Mm -hmm. Some people say, but kuna branches. Tuachuna matawi, tuweke barabara. With branches, I'm not so much for it as a safety mm. expert because a branch would fall on the road. It would not necessarily mean there is impending danger. Mm. So there are these uh, LED, uh, LED flare lights that also serve as uh, the safety triangles. They are visible 300 meters away from. Those ones you can put about 10 meters away from you, but somebody will see them from 300 meters away. Mm. I would encourage people to get that. But if you don't have that, make sure you have the normal safety triangles. Make sure your number plate is clearly visible. You might have those branches put. Nobody will have an intent. But if your number plate is clearly visible, number plates are reflective in a way. Uh -huh. Somebody will always know. A Kenyan number plate is yellow at the back. It is white at the front. Uh -huh. So anytime they see the plate, they will always start to de-accelerate and they will reach at they, they will slow down and if there was any damage that was to happen the impact will be minimal make sure in this list you have at least clothes to change a pair or just one extra piece a full a full arrangement that you can change in case of uh, i've seen people who got stuck in mud eh? mm and they are mud all over. They didn't even have uh, clothes to change. They're driving, it, it, it's, it looks ugly. And make sure you have a car phone charger, a pair of comfortable shoes. If you can have gum boots, have them. If you can have safety boots, have them. Have safety ropes that you can use to pull your car in case of anything. This is my advice. Always ensure your fuel tank is way beyond where you are going. In the aviation industry, it is measured in hours. Wajia to Nairobi, you need roughly, it's 45 minutes flight. But they always put fuel up to five hours. So that in case of any diversion, in case of any alternate landing, they are comfortable. But you find most of us, mina jua gari yangu. Naivasha. Then from Naivasha you want to plan again. Then something happens. You get to use an alternate route. You know, in journey planning management, this is the route we want to use. We want to stop over at this point, at this point, at this point. Mm -hmm. What is the history of this road? Uh, like right now, uh, the highway, Mombasa Highway, uh, if I was to travel, I would carry extra fuel because I hear bridges have been swept away, mm -hmm. so it means we might use alternative routes. Mm -hmm. The other day, uh, a friend of mine uh, called Samuel was from Nairobi to Mombasa. Uh, there was an accident at Maili, Maili somewhere mm -hmm. called Maili. The, these guys had to go back to Kambani and find a way and find mm -hmm. a way until they reached Mombasa. And that was a much more longer route and they really spent on mm -hmm. fuel. In fact, from Konza through Salama, uh, as you go down mm -hmm. to um, Asut and Hamoud, mm -hmm. all those areas, mm -hmm. usually there, there is always some feedback about something happened. Mm -hmm. All the way to Ndituande. Mm -hmm. 
something either people were stuck in the mud or you know an was, accident yes, has happened accident has happened and people were diverted something mm -hmm. yeah so you're, you're quite right yeah. so i keep telling people if you can carry extra cash not necessarily that you must use it it's your money just put it in your pocket just in case and my advice in journey management plan is something we are not commonly used to. If you live Nairobi now, you want to go to Busia. It is not a must. You travel the whole night. If you reach somewhere along Nakuru and you feel you need to rest, rest, you will continue the journey safely tomorrow. That is in part of the journey management plan. It comes a time when I'm leaving here from Nairobi to Kisumu. The journey is so smooth and beautiful, and when I reach uh, Molo Junction, I'm growing weary. I strive to reach Caricho, sleep, and then finish my end of the journey tomorrow. So in journey management planning, you realize that when you have all these things carried, you are set to go Maybe just on a anywhere. footnote there, how, how important is it to rest? Like, what, is, what are the risk factors of, uh, of fatigue? Fatigue is one of the leading causes of road accidents because, one, there is something called the biological human clock, the biological clock. It is 9.30 p.m. The body tells you it is now time to shut and sleep, to reinvigorate the energy for tomorrow. So anytime you start working against this clock, the body tends to shut down. You must not necessarily close your eyes to sleep, but that is the moment when you now drive, there is a, s s a slow down speed bump sign, traffic sign. You see it, the body does not even interpret. You hit the bump, then you realize, ah, you, you see the driver gets a bit shocked and it's like, sorry, I didn't see it. If it can make you not see a bump, you will not realize when you are veering off into oncoming traffic lane. Fatigue has no time. Rest for the body. You know, people think driving is just sitting and controlling the wheels. See, uh, it is more of mathematics. It's like finding X in an equation. You really have to work it well until you find it right. Because any time you miss it, the teacher will always give you a wrong mark, an X. Yeah. But on the road, if you fail to get it right, someone will die. You may not all die, but someone will spend their lives in a wheelchair. You are going to spend a lot on now repairing your car. You must not necessarily be on a head-on. But imagine the moment you are veering and then you didn't see a stone somewhere and it hits your sump guard and the oil is down and now you have to look for breakdown, you have to pay for the mechanic to come. It is not necessarily that someone must get hurt because in road safety we say these are measures put in place to help prevent possible deaths, possible injuries, possible damage to property and environment. You might just be spoiling the environment by pouring oil that will burn that place and there will never be grass again. Right now the country is suffering because uh, of deforestation. Mm -hmm. And in journey management plan, we also talk about patience. Patience is very key for you to arrive to your destination safely. Yeah, let's talk about that patience because, you know, um, two days ago there was that issue in Gilgil and I, I happened to be there just yesterday. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, I was not caught in the jam, but uh, I, had, I came after the jam, you know, had been cleared and stuff. And one of the things I was trying to find out, even for the policeman there, was what really happened mm -hmm. here. And they said that you know uh, there was a pass out parade, some some uh, roads were blocked, and uh, some guys became creative with the blockage of the roads. Mm -hmm. They started overlapping in in places, and then that caused others to think, hey, why am I waiting, and so and so is going, so people followed each other, mm -hmm. and a backlog began on the other side of the road, oncoming vehicles began their own backlog, and before you know it, those are, those are heavy gridlock. A heavy gridlock. And all because of lack of patience of uh, 
some of us. Maybe you can speak to that in terms of, you know, the moment even sometimes you want to step out of your car and tell someone, please, the moment we get in a line and our cars are stopped, mm -hmm. you can be sure somebody will pull out mm -hmm. and start overtaking. Mm -hmm. And we are stopped. And all of us is not like we came to stop here. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we are going to different destinations. So how important is it to, you know, drivers are watching us tonight. What would you tell them in terms of their uh, the decorum and exercise of patience on the roads? Patience is a very vital part of road safety. Most of this, let me start from PSV, public service. They have a timeline they want to achieve. That is why you, f you hear them talk of return, return. Somebody will come from Busia to Nairobi, go back, come again, and now they want to go for the last time, final time, to rest. So they lack what we call patience. You, you see, like what happened in Gilgila, eh? it is mandatory in this nation that the presidential motorcade has to be given right of way. If we were all just going to stop and then be on that line and let the motorcade go, and when it is clear the police is mandatory, he would give the first signal and everybody will follow in that line. It would, there would, actually, there would not be jam because the presidential motorcade moves at a higher speed, not the normal speed we know. But if, you, if I'm, I'm trying to reason this way, you find that they have passed somewhere and then five minutes later, you are being released to go. That road is clear. But now the problem is we are impatient. And most drivers are vehicle movers. They lack in the art of driving. And uh, it's, a, it's a, a show off and immaturity. I can drive better than you. You, you think, do you know where I'm going? You, you, you don't know where I'm going. So you know they what want, my car can do. My car is a yeah. land cruiser. It can do anything. Yeah. And then that, that, that uh, scrum up begins to build. Yeah. And people get agitated and they get fed up and it's like, okay. You go. But this is what I always do on the road. When I see someone ahead of me is moving slowly, I tend to anticipate. Why is he moving slowly? This patience has costed millions of vehicles. Uh, on social media, you see buses being swept on the rivers. Oh. Impatience makes this driver believe that they have to go. And then in their mentality, ah, I have people in this vehicle, it is heavy. What they don't know that the wheels have air and it creates buoyancy. So every time you move into water and then there is air, it lifts a bit because now the, the vehicle tire does not touch the ground. Mm -hmm. It's seeming like you are floating. Mm -hmm. And then water is moving against you. It just flips you over slowly, slowly, and you go. We are lacking in patience, and it is going to cost us. I would even wish that the CS Masharia and the boss at the NTSA come with a high rule. And then I said that, and someone asked me, what would that be? I said, every vehicle that overlaps should be impounded. If the vehicle costed you 800,000 Kenya shillings, when it is impounded, come with that 800,000 shillings, and then they will release it to you. If that happens in this country, it has happened in China, it has happened in Switzerland, you overlap, your vehicle is 1.2. Come with that 1.2 when it is impounded, then they will give it back to you. You realize that people, it's like buying a new car again. You realize that mm. many people will not Interesting. overlap. We'll take a break on that very harsh note. This is a spotlight, don't go away. received this machine way back in uh, 2016 and since we got the machine uh, it's been very useful for me in particular uh, because we are able to offer all the diagnostic ultrasound services. I am a beneficiary of the ultrasound machine donated by Lotto to PCA Kikuyu Hospital. 
treatment. I had issues with my pelvic, so I was sent for an ultrasound. And I came and it was done by Dr. Jovi actually. And it gave a very clear diagnosis of what the problem was. And now I am fine, fully recovered and back to work. Uh, and on average we do about uh, 20 to 30 patients on a daily basis in a month. Our numbers average between 400 to 600 patients per month. It is a very high quality machine. The performance is excellent. Uh, thanks to Lotto, Lotto Foundation for the great job you're doing. It is a noble gesture. Please carry on like that. Together, we are changing lives. Thanks a million. Hey, you. Yeah. I'm talking to you. I know you. You can't stop thinking about it, can you? The one who's named it shot. Mr. Wind and Grind. You're in it. Who will it? Spare it's the top corner. So go for it. Go for football. Go for a decoder and two months of GoTV Plus subscription for only 1,999 shillings. Jamge <laughs> Igaba Dos igabatinde na mining anan small holder farmer agi maje ita sparatet eng gabati shengunge. Dos si maje gareta ita bek anan irrigation go ekit na taratin gipkoi. Fine Touch Africa Limited go bai bai go ibun ortunwe keter ter. Jaba gareta ita bek go drip irrigation ne anan go sprinklers. Fine Touch Africa Limited go bai bai go ibun ortunwe gab gareta ita bek jaba undercover crop technologies go u. Greenhouse Axiad Nets. Engju tagaye ngi. Koga jin gaba tindet. Kim na tet ko bai ito nda mbare nye. Asigo bit ko teske su tik. Fine Touch Africa. Hora kualdoi irrigation pumps. Solar pumps. Dam liners. Planting trays. Sprayers. Aga lakche jang. Ruta ji dugo shekwak eng Nairobi. Eldoret. Nakuru. Akitale. Ana nibirti simet eng namba. 0724-615-066 and then go website and www.finetouch.co.ke Na ile, imuji go ruta jimbareta apka batindet yega nyor samet. Fine Touch makes it green. The Safaricom Open Day Extravaganza is here. Enjoy exciting discounts of up to 45% off on the latest smartphones and accessories for you. Walk into Safaricom shops or dealer outlet and enjoy wonderful deals on the Neon Ray, Samsung A2 Core, Neon Storm, Huawei Wi-Fi Lite, Nokia 2.2, Techno Common Air, among many other devices that come with the Google apps you love at the size and speed you need. Simple, transparent, honest. Safaricom is for you. Welcome back to the Spotlight. My name is Levi Kones. We are talking about road safety and journey planning management. And with me is uh, Walter Tet, who is a road uh, safety uh, expert, who is talking to us about the things we need to do when we are planning our journeys over this Christmas period. If you are traveling somewhere as a driver or a passenger, this show is for you. So let me talk about passengers. We have talked about drivers. Uh, quite extensively and we tend to of course lean on the drivers because they're the ones most responsible but then there are responsibilities of passengers uh, you started by uh, we ended on uh, and one of the things we were talking about just as we were finishing the show was the issue of you know uh, drivers insisting on driving through water mm -hmm. there's a viral video that went uh, around uh, mm -hmm. about this Matatu guy mm -hmm. of course we have seen quite a number of, of, of videos where vehicles have been swept away but there's one particular one where a guy is wading through the water and he pokes through it and then he calls his, his bus, uh, the driver na chocha gari hapo, na kanyaga kanyaga race alafu na apply na full force na kuingia and we saw what happened there, the thing fell. Mm -hmm. But it had some passengers. What is the responsibility? Let's talk about what is the responsibility of a passenger? Where you need to or do you have anything? An input. Uh, Kones, it's very interesting because uh, it is the solemn role of a passenger to speak out. Remember, if you are paying, it is a service you are paying for and you need to get the best out of that service. 
you are allowed to sleep. Every time a vehicle is moving, you will never tell me that in that vehicle there's someone, who, actually all of them don't know how to drive. There is always one or two who know how to drive. But even if you don't know how to drive, there is that the inner you, the instinct in you that tells you, ah, no, this one is not okay. Passengers are failing because they are not speaking up. They are not speaking up. Most of these vehicles, if you try to sit in the front seat, they always say, you know, it's occupied. They want to give it to people who are used to their recklessness, who will support them, somebody who, you know, who will encourage them. But who are chocha. But I'm a driver. Mm. There is that part when you are doing 80 and you want to navigate a corner, and inside you feel no. If a passenger at that moment will tell you, driver, are you sure about that? Mm. There is a battle inside you, and mm -mm, you always come to your conscience and say, no, something is wrong. Passengers are not speaking up because they see touts to be rowdy and all that. But uh, I've seen people who are being beaten up because they spoke. And you find the passengers are now ganging up against the one who spoke. So passengers and fellow viewers who are watching tonight, your main role is to speak out. On many occasions, I'm on Twitter and somebody inboxes me and tells me this vehicle is being recklessly driven. Thank you to NTSA, thank you to Kenya Police. They react fast to my tweets. The next possible police roadblock would slow it down. But what of if you don't achieve to reach that roadblock? A tire burst goes and everybody is dead. Passengers, you, you find uh, the vehicle is full, there are no seats. You know, you, know, you, you can sit here, we, we are going to the same place. You are from my, my village area. Mm. But when an accident happens, it doesn't know your village area, it doesn't know your brother, it doesn't know your sister. You will perish and it is only your people who will feel the pain. That is why I keep on saying road safety is a message of love and only those who love you will share it with you. It is a role of each and every passenger to speak out. NTSA has done so much work. They have applications where you can report, put all the details. But that is still not enough. Everybody must speak out. If two people will speak out and say, no, we are not going. The other time I was traveling from Kisumu, and we were coming to Nairobi, so towards Londiani, Mm. This driver is tired. I'm awake because I'm with him on the front seat, and uh, for some time I'd really enjoyed his driving. Eh? And then all of a sudden I saw a drastic change. This guy from the normal lane is veering off. I thought he was changing to the climbing mm. lane. And uh, for sh some short time, the left wheel touched off-road, and he came back. That happened three times. And then when I looked back, everybody was asleep. It's, uh, it's almost 1 o'clock in the night. So I told him, uh, driver, would you please uh, stop? I want to have fresh hair. And then he stopped, and I called him and asked him, are you OK? And he told me, no, I'm tired. I told him, there are two options here. I will either drive this vehicle, or you sleep for 20 minutes. And we resolved that he sleeps for 20 minutes. The first passenger to wake up woke up at the 17th minute. Three minutes for this guy to wake up and then we go on. They started calling the office. Oh, the driver has done what? Oh, the driver has done what? Then uh, when the office called, I talked with the office and told them, no, the driver was tired. I'm so-and-so. I'm the one who instructed him to sleep. The person who has called has just woken up when we are less three minutes to pick up the journey. And when this guy woke up and drove to Nairobi, it was so beautiful. I even felt like sleeping. They are human beings. Speak to them, because when an accident happens, they, uh, drivers mostly will evade their sides. Most drivers will survive, but with the passengers, you will die. So it is upon you to speak up. Don't allow a driver to cross water 
or a flooded river, um, we call them in road safety the lagger and the ford. Don't allow a driver to cross with you. I would even ask you to alight. Let them cross if they decide with the vehicle alone. But don't, uh, I'm, I'm seeing videos, drivers, uh, especially in Okambani, they are crossing these rivers and people are just seated comfortably inside. And the moment the vehicle flips, they start screaming for help. Oh. I will not help you, as for me. Oh. Yeah. Tough things, eh? Tough moments. Yeah. Yeah. And yet so many journeys to, uh, to, to be undertaken. You know, every, every year we blame uh, the cops, uh, the NTSA probably, mm -hmm. And we say uh, the, the numbers are not coming down. Uh, like They're going this, up. Like this year already, the numbers are higher than last year's. And uh, when people say safety starts with you, it sounds like it's an arrogant statement, but it really is. Uh, is safety does really start with, with the individual. Passenger, mm -hmm. as you say, mm -hmm. or driver, whichever one uh, uh, you, uh, you might be. Mm -hmm. the, maybe as we... Uh, come to a close because you know there's much more we could say and I want us to even speak about this even as we get closer to the end of the year because then I think we become a bit more crazy mm -hmm. uh, what would be your advice to uh, to people planning especially now with not only the issues of congestion and highways and driving but now we have rain and it's not letting up you know projections are we, are we going have to three be more weeks of yes. severe rain eh? three more weeks of severe rain mm -hmm. deadly rain so this season what would be the if they have forgotten everything else you have said tonight what is that thing you want to drive home and tell them this one was it how he viewers if you want to forget everything i've said it is allowed but please what i'm going to speak from now make sure you catch it well hold on to it it might save you. Number one, make sure your wipers in the vehicle are fully functional. Most of us only reali realize they don't work when the rain is now too much. Number two, when weather changes, everything else must change. Even the torque in that vehicle will change. Because it's now like, hey, Kones, Unona Vizuri, what does that look like? Everything changes. So speed changes, braking distances changes, everything, the climate, the air you breathe, it all changes. And it must change with you. Driving in dry land, you can be aggressive. But driving, driving in rain, you have to be smooth and accurate and slow. Number three. Make sure, as a driver, you keep safe following distances. Because when weather changes, everything changes and everything becomes longer. It changes from being short to longer. Because you will step on your brake, the wheels will lock, and the vehicle will still skid in inertia. That is why we are having so many rear arms right now. Keep safe following distances, not only for the driver. Passengers, you people know about road safety. If you see this driver is too close and the speed, just ask yourself if the, if the first vehicle or the vehicle ahead of us has to stop, will we stop safely? If you in yourself feel no, share it with the person that is driving. Number four. Use low beams when it is raining. Don't put on your full lights, no. Use low beams. Why? For you to be able to see and for you to be seen. Just make sure right now in this season all your lights are functioning. We are seeing buses that have no tail lights or rear lights. You only see them come to light when they're stepping on brakes. So I am asking someone who is a bus fanatic and they tell me, those lights, we don't want them to work so that when we overtake you, you don't see us again. And it's like, oh my God, do you even know what you're speaking about? Those lights will guide the, next, the, the driver after you to know what to do, what distance to keep. Number five, be prepared to give yourself plenty of time during this rainy season because 
things change. You might Google a road and it tells you it is well. 30, 20 minutes later, flash floods, the bridge is swept away. You have to be patient. Give yourself plenty of time, plenty of time. Accept it in within you that we are going, but anything can happen and then we'll have to wait. Do not drive in water puddles or pools because uh, you don't know what is hidden under that water. I've seen two videos where one uh, Prado TX is sunk. I think the driver was going and there was a manhole and he didn't know and just they are inside, they cannot come out. The water is trickling in. I've seen a canter that went over a pothole and it was more of a sinkhole and so avoid water puddles. Avoid them completely. It is not a must that you splash it. You might be splashing and going deep inside a hole. Never ever underestimate the power of moving water. In defensive driving when we are training people, we tell them, okay, you want to cross that river. Well and good. Come out as the driver. Fold your trousers, remove your shoes, walk into that water. Anything above your knee, dangerous, very dangerous. It could be anything below your knee, but feel the force of that water. If you yourself, you fear going there because it will take you. Don't force the vehicle. It will not survive. The vehicle will go. Before crossing any lager or ford, be sure even if the water levels are low. There is something people don't know. Two things you cannot joke about with are fire and water. Water will drill a pothole with time on a tarmac road mm -hmm. and it destroys it completely. A good example is from feather to gate B. That stretch was very oh good. Yeah. But poor drainage, water has messed up everything. So before you are sure you are going into this lager, lager or ford, these are waterways, be sure. Don't be fooled that uh, yesterday we passed here and it was not that high. You don't know the level of water that has come. Right now we are having high levels of water. Uh, we are even anticipating the bridge between uh, Nakuru and Naivasha mm. could overflow any time. But you see, on a normal day, you see the water levels down, but now they are up the bridge. That tells you how much the water has risen. My final advice, it is not a must that you drive in the rain. If you are having visibility issues, it is a heroic act to park beside the road. Let those who can go, go. Drivers, a lot of you are using hazard lights in the rain. Please don't. Unless there is impending danger, use them. If there is no impending danger, just use your fog lights and your low beam lights. I wish you well. Drive safe. The festive season we are having this time, we've never had it before. All the other ones are dry. This time we are dealing with floods. We are dealing with visibility issues. We are dealing with swept away bridges. If you have to park your vehicle beside the road, look and be sure you are not parking on a waterway. Flash floods may sweep you. Road safety is a message of love and only those who have true love will share it with you. Amen to that. Thank you for coming. Welcome. Looking forward, we shall talk again. Thank you. That's a spotlight tonight. God bless you. Good night. Take care of yourselves and each other on our roads this season.